where every year nimble fingers like these manipulate 11,200,000 feet of aluminium wire into a variety of shapes. But how many people can guess what is being made? To confuse the issue, perhaps, here's another clue. Well, if you haven't already guessed, the mixture is a solution of latex, to which vulcanizing ingredients have been added together with soap, believe it or not, to make it frothy and create bubbles. This process, using a wire skeleton inside a rubber toy so that it can be bent into any shape, is another indication of the way chemistry is playing its part in the development of modern toys. The solution, 50,000 gallons of it in one year, is poured into moulds with the specially prepared wire and later vulcanised, which of course produces a rubbery effect. And so a new toy is born. Special pigments have already been dissolved in the rubber, but now the toy gets an extra course of beauty treatment. Today, these toys alone are earning valuable dollars for Britain, and they are, in fact, exported to practically every country in the world. The finishing touches are added by experienced girl artists using paint with a special non-toxic rubber base. At any time of the day, this room looks like a children's paradise with row upon row of toys and no one to play with them. The idea of this type of rubber toy was conceived so that it could have a personality that was changeable according to the child's mood, and just as important, would be practically unbreakable. But either way, it does give some indication of the trouble that toy manufacturers are prepared to take to bring happiness to the children of today. <laughs>